Hi, welcome to a new episode, in the Internet Surfer, hosting the most horror, and creepiest stories, from Reddit. Please, don't forget, to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. What was the scariest, we need to leave now gut feeling that you've ever experienced? Scary stories from, r slash ask Reddit. Surfing a fairly secluded reef break, offshore across a channel. This place is in a very southern state of Australia. Overcast weather, but a still, amazing day for the waves. I was surfing with only one other guy, we were trading waves and getting to know each other in between sets. I asked what he did for a living, and he was a marine biologist. We'd both recently moved to the area and were new to surfing it as well. Despite it being extremely good surf, after 40 minutes he says, I don't like this, something feels off, I feel like I'm being watched, like I'm bait. I didn't want to leave as it was excellent surfing, but this guy was a marine biologist, so I took his instinct as a sign to play it safe. We paddled back across the deep channel together as quickly as we could without panicking and walked the 15 minutes trek back to the car park talking the whole way. I got his mobile number for future surfing together given how small town it is here and not knowing anyone. We noticed a 15 feet inflatable boat pull up near the reef and hang around for a bit without much thought. Later that night while looking at my social media, I read about three fishermen at the same location we were at that morning, at the same time, in their boat, as they pulled up to check their cray pots on the beach side of the reef, they were circled twice by a great white shark that was as big as their boat. That guy most likely saved me from a horrible experience that day, I messaged him with the link to the Facebook page with the comments regarding their experience. Chills ran through my body for a good 20 minutes. He was adamant he felt the presence of something and he was right. When I was about 8, in 1985, an old El Camino pulled up alongside my friend and I, with a man saying he knew my mom. He did know her name but something fell off so I grabbed my friend and ran. When we told my mom, she went white and called the police officers. Turns out this guy thought my mom had stolen his job at the steel mill she worked at the time and wanted to hurt her. He already had a warrant out for nearly killing his wife that morning. When I was 16 my mom had a terrible feeling about an outing some friends and I were going on. Hindsight being 20 20s it was a stupid move for me to go anyway but I did. Long story short there was a car accident my two best friends died and I nearly did. It'll be 30 years in November. I still regret getting in that car every day. My friends might still be alive if I hadn't. My mom had that mama spidey sense she still does. More recently, I was at our other house in the country with my oldest son and his wife and kids. There was a break in the storms, and my son decided to go home instead of spending the night. I was filled with dread at the thought of them going home so late, since we were dealing with intermittent but severe storms. So much dread that I started crying and begging them not to leave. Thankfully they agreed. We all started home the next morning with them following me and my husband. We came up on this stretch of road that we know has no lights at night, to see police barricading a washed-out bridge, and cranes retrieving cars. We all piled out of our cars to ask the officers what happened. Apparently there were several cars that had kept going, not knowing the bridge was out. The lone survivor in the first car had told the police that they went off the bridge at about 9.30 p.m. That's about the time my son wanted to leave. My husband just looked at me, and my boy hugged me extra tight because he knew what could have happened. Back in her 20s my mum was living in London and looking to move into a slightly bigger place. She'd found a really decent price for a flat slightly out of the area she was hoping. She'd called the agent to book a viewing and that's when things turned odd. So, the guy booking the viewing started asking weird requests and questions, such as to bring her passport, her age, race, and physical appearance. Would she be coming on her own? Did she have a car, or would she be getting the bus? He very persistent that she should arrive by bus as it would be easiest for her, explains it was a straight road down from the bus stop to the apartment block. Obviously quite unnerved by this call but still interested because the flat looked ideal, she and my dad who were dating at the time decided to check the exterior and surrounding area. 
The day before the viewing they drove there, first passing the bus stop he was indicating to her to arrive via. From the bus stop there was about 150-200 meters of derelict wasteland that she would have to walk past to get to the flat, and standing at the end of the street in the location this apartment block should have been a huge, abandoned building. Smashed broken windows, graffiti, no entry signs. The lot. Definitely nothing inhabitable in sight. Still when she tells this today you can see how much it, rightly, shook her. Of course she didn't go to her viewing, however she informed the police advising them of the planned time and place. From what she saw, from following up with them they didn't appear to take this tip seriously and little was done. A couple of years later though while in a pub with some friend she gets chatting to a guy she just met through mutual friends that night. He was in the police and through conversation her story came up. He said that that area at the time of her viewing had a huge human trafficking problem. Still gives me chills. Back in 2019 me, my husband and two girls aged 6 and 9 were on a road trip in the south. We had booked an apartment in Atlanta through Airbnb without knowing the neighborhood at all. It was bad. Really unsure with a lot of creepy looking people hanging around. We went into the apartment and immediately my six-year-old said, I don't like it here. The door didn't lock properly. The beds were dirty. There was rotting food in the fridge and the bathroom had not been cleaned in ages. My husband called the owner, who was furious and refused to give us a refund. To de-escalate the situation, my husband offered to not leave a negative review if we could just get our money back. The owner agreed but asked us to wait for him so that they could talk about it in person. As soon as he hung up, I told my husband that we needed to leave now. We hurried to the car. And as we pulled out of the parking garage, we saw the owner driving up with four friends. He didn't see us and we bolted out of there. Ended up at a hotel on the 14th floor. Didn't even feel safe at street level. After graduating undergraduate, I was working as a case worker for individuals with developmental disabilities and got assigned a new case for a young man who had autism and severe behavioral concerns. I met him at his grandmother's house since she had custody of him since his parents weren't around, I think mom was in prison. Met this young man who was probably about 6 feet 0 inches and weighing around 250 pounds but had the developmental capacity of a 5-year-old child with a hairpin trigger temper. The house he was living in was absolutely destroyed with the other piece of furniture that was not smashed up was an oversized beanbag chair in the living room. Grandma gave up trying to send the kid to school since he would absolutely destroy the place if he were forced to go. Grandma was no peach, but I felt for her and wanted to help. One of the meetings I was having with them the kid and grandma seemed especially tense like pacing around the room and smacking the walls. After about an hour of trying to get stuff done and realizing that it was not going to happen on this trip, it happens in this line of work, I decided to call it since the kid was becoming increasingly agitated. Grandma was annoyed I would have to come back again but we scheduled for a week or so out and left my business card with a reminder of the appointment. I leave to go back to my home state for a few days and when I get back I get called into my supervisor's office. I guess the night I left the kid had a complete breakdown and beat his grandmother to death. No one noticed until the kid came wandering outside after a day or two covered in blood. I probably missed everything in less than three hours. After graduating undergraduate, I was working as a case worker for individuals with developmental disabilities and got assigned a new case for a young man who had autism and severe behavioral concerns. I met him at his grandmother's house since she had custody of him since his parents weren't around, I think mom was in prison. Met this young man who was probably about 6 feet 0 inches and weighing around 250 pounds but had the developmental capacity of a 5-year-old child with a hairpin trigger temper. The house he was living in was absolutely destroyed with the other piece of furniture that was not smashed up was an oversized beanbag chair in the living room. Grandma gave up trying to send the kid to school since he would absolutely destroy the place if he were forced to go. Grandma was no peach, but I felt for her and wanted to help. 
One of the meetings I was having with them the kid and grandma seemed especially tense like pacing around the room and smacking the walls. After about an hour of trying to get stuff done and realizing that it was not going to happen on this trip, it happens in this line of work, I decided to call it since the kid was becoming increasingly agitated. Grandma was annoyed I would have to come back again but we scheduled for a week or so out and left my business card with a reminder of the appointment. I leave to go back to my home state for a few days and when I get back I get called into my supervisor's office. I guess the night I left the kid had a complete breakdown and beat his grandmother to death. No one noticed until the kid came wandering outside after a day or two covered in blood. I probably missed everything in less than three hours. Me and my little sister went camping in the woods remarkably close to our house when we were kids. We'd seen this bald guy with a blue shirt and a dog walking around, which isn't unusual for the area, you'll often see people walking and say hello. For some reason though, I just got this tight feeling in my chest, and my sister must have too, because we both just gave each other this look. I don't know what it was that made me do it, this is very out of character for me, but I took a photo of the back of him as he was walking away. A while later, we see the same guy again near the lake. He comes over and asks about the tent we're carrying, where we'll be setting up, and are we camping with our dad. We say yes, we're just going to see him now, a lie. We must have had the same moment of psychicness because we walked off up a fork in the path until we were out of view, then looked at each other and jumped down a path hidden by the bushes and waited behind them on the parallel trail for a bit. The guy watched us walk off, pretended to play with his dog until he couldn't see us, then turned around and ran up the path after us. Thankfully, he didn't see us hidden and carried on up straight where he thought we'd gone. We decided camping was a bad idea and went home. That evening my mum showed us a post in the local residence group, which is a picture of the same bald guy trying to break into someone's house. Apparently he'd just been walking round trying on people's front doors and claimed to be a repair guy when he was stopped. I dread to think what his intentions were, but it was incredibly lucky me and my sister knew those woods so well, otherwise we wouldn't have thought to go down one of the hidden paths. Sitting in my friend's backyard with their two kids, my husband, and another friend, enjoying pizza that my host made. It was a beautiful sunny day with no real wind. We were having a wonderful time, just out of the pool and hungry for pizza, when I suddenly felt on edge. I looked straight at the kids, about eight and ten or so years old, and just said, Get in the house. We all scrambled, and a second later, we heard creaking. And maybe five seconds after it started, this big branch fell off of their pine tree onto the table where we were sitting. Thankfully, no one was hurt besides having to pick pine needles out of our pizza. I can only assume that I subconsciously heard the branch starting to give. I was 12 at the time, and my favorite thing in the world was spending the night at my grandma's house. We lived in the sticks at the time, and my grandma lived closer to the nearest town. Thursday night was grandma's night. I felt something off one Thursday night and asked my mom if I could just stay home with my mom and dad. They reluctantly agreed. I went home, watched some TV, and went to bed. My bedroom was on the adjoining wall to the living room. I wasn't really asleep, but I heard my mom keep saying my dad's name over and over again, with a hint of panic. I sneak out to the living room, and my dad is on the couch with his head tilted back, snoring, really loud. Which wasn't uncommon but my mom was beside him shaking him and telling him to wake up. She yelled at me to go back to bed. I didn't obviously. I snuck to their bedroom to call 911. I told the dispatcher that my dad was asleep, and my mom was trying to wake him up, but she couldn't. Eventually the phone call went to the living room and my mom talked to the dispatcher. They sent an ambulance, to the middle of nowhere. My dad had taken a bottle of diazepam to try to commit suicide. I remember sitting on the floor and holding his hand and repeating over and over that I loved him. The ambulance came and took him to the hospital. Lights and sirens the whole way. We didn't know what happened during that time 
but we found out a day or so later and that is when our world changed. I am very sure if I did not call 911 that night that my dad would have succeeded, and it would probably have driven my mom over the edge as well. And I have no idea why I didn't want to stay the night at my nanny's. I just had that feeling that I needed to go home. Great awareness. My husband used to say I'm crazy that I do loops around our area if there's a car behind me when I turn off the main road to our little road. I tell him I'm not having some weirdos follow me home. He got followed by some crazy road rage once with our son in the car and had to pull a couple U-turns to lose him. He doesn't think I'm crazy anymore. People are. I stopped by a friend's house to watch a ball game, he, his wife, and I were just relaxing, and someone knocked on the door. It was the middle of the afternoon, he opened it up, he was expecting others might come by also. I heard him greeting someone, the guy was his brother I had never met, but had heard about. Very unsure looking guy, meth teeth, scrawny, long greasy hair. My friend had told me that he had a brother who lived in the area who had a serious drug problem. Friend is talking to his brother about nothing, and the guy gets a call on his cell, whoever called, all he told them was, not yet I'll call you later. Seems pretty obvious this guy has come to rob and is most likely to take out witnesses, I look at my friend, it seems he has come to the same conclusion. Now my friend's wife is a no-nonsense type of woman, sweet, but athletic, on the tall side, she had left the room to go to the bathroom, or so she said. She comes back in the room with a handgun, I'm thinking, WTF did I walk into, but she calmly says, Ron, you're strung out and came here with bad intentions, you need to quietly leave, if you get any ideas, Chris, their son, is sitting outside in his truck to make sure you go. Ron doesn't say a word, he just turns and goes out the door, we can hear his old pickup drive away rapidly. Chris comes in and says, he's gone, I don't think he's coming back. They ask me to leave so they can decide what to do, they have already called the police, who are well acquainted with Ron. The next morning my friend called me, the police said they found his brother in the trailer park where he lived, murdered with multiple gunshots. They guess he was in serious drug debt and had come to rob his brother. I told my friend I was sorry, he said, don't be. My BL was a severe alcoholic and opioid addict. The hardest thing my wife had to learn was to just, give up on him. Almost all our usual instincts to protect and help are actually enabling the addict even further. There came a point where my BL was going to be homeless. She wanted to have him move in with us. I said absolutely not. It caused three days of arguing but she finally saw my side. It turns out it was the last straw for my BL, and he agreed to go to rehab. He's ten years sober now with a beautiful wife, a daughter, and an excellent job. Disclaimer, if you're going through this with a loved one, it's best to try to come to accept that their rock bottom may be homelessness, jail, and even death. In the end, the addict needs to choose to get help themselves. <laughs> When we were in our teens, my sister and I were walking our dog in our local forest area remarkably close to our childhood home. We were about to leave and had just clipped our dog back up, when a lady appeared out of nowhere and started chatting to us. She was, odd. She told us her dog would love some socialization with our dog and we could go back with her for five minutes. What I hadn't clocked, but my sister had, was that her dog was nowhere to be seen. The lady was almost rounding us up to head back towards the forest when, little did I know, my sister spotted a van out of the corner of her eye. I was still oblivious at this point. Suddenly, my sister screams, Dad. And luckily, my dad had finished work and was now out on a run. He started waving and running towards us and as we turned back around the lady had vanished. My sister looks back over at the van and sees the lady closing the passenger door and it is speeding off. Dog still nowhere to be seen. I believe we were minutes away from the abduction. It was divine intervention that my dad happened to be at the right place at the right time. 
I bartend and years ago I kicked this guy out because he was acting very strange, muttering under his breath that he would kill my other customers, just really hostile. He had missing fingers on one hand, and he was kind of a bigger guy. After the bar closed I was almost finished counting money, so like an hour after everyone left, and I was just about to leave, and I had that gut feeling. I looked out the window and that guy was standing on the corner watching me in a ski mask. I know it was him because of the build. As soon as I grabbed my phone he took it off, but the police officers knew who he was. Now he has a vendetta against me, and he's well known around town. He's nuts. That's happened to me. I pulled out of a difficult junction where the roads dips down so it's hard to see oncoming traffic when you're coming out. Didn't notice the white van coming up. I didn't even cut him off, it was just a bit too close. Anyway, he tailgate me all the way down the road like a lunatic. Absolutely unhinged for something that was a minor mistake. Luckily, I remembered there was a nearby police station, so practically swerved into this side street on two wheels where the station was and pulled into it, that got rid of him, he drove straight past haha. I've also driven past my house and doubled back if the same car has been behind me for a while and I'm driving at night. Better to be safe than sorry and my gran once got followed home at night by suspected muggers because she worked in a shop. In college I was studying at my school's business school building, waiting to meet a friend and I had a sudden sense of dread. I texted my friend that I would just meet her at her dorm later instead of meeting at the business school, and I left to walk to a nearby library instead. When I got to the library about 20 minutes later, I checked my phone and I had nearly 20 missed calls and texts from my friends who knew I was at the business building. Literally seconds after I left, a student entered the building and stabbed multiple people, killing one professor, and injuring several students. It happened in the room I had just been in. Years ago, when I was still living at home with my parents I drove home around 2 a.m. As I parked my car I noticed a man walking down the street, I decided to wait until he passed my car and was far enough for me to get out, however, instead he passed my car and hid behind the van that was directly parked behind me. I guess he did not think I was paying attention to him. So, I called my dad who was asleep to come down and get me. He did and when the guy saw my dad he immediately ran away. I was lucky. Reminds of a night I was closing up at work in high school. I worked at a pool hall till midnight, 1mish on weekends. One winter night I locked up and went to my car, which was parked next to the front door. Started it, then got out and scraped ice off the windows. As I was getting close to done, a guy walked around the side of the building, on the same side of the car as I was, passenger side. It was late and dark, and I don't normally see anyone, so I decided I was done scraping and walked around to the driver's side and got in and locked the door. I locked the door just as this guy passed the driver's side rear bumper. He then slowed a little, and a second guy came around the corner from the same direction. He waited for guy number two, and then they walked off together. Spooked me right out. My dad jumped out of his car on an empty street as he hadn't closed the boot, trunk, properly and it popped open. A guy appeared seemingly out of nowhere and made a beeline towards the open driver's door, so my dad grabbed his hatchet from his tool bag in the boot. The guy was just about to reach the door when my dad shouted and waved the hatchet, causing the guy to turn around and sprint in the opposite direction like something out of a cartoon. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.